Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is pool chapter 28. This one is titled Hatching Plans. Your bubbly student practically floated ahead of you, beyond stoked that she was going to be the one who got to show you to your cabin. This one is yours, Miss Lynn, she announced brightly, turning around to give you a lovely smile as she swept her arm out to show you the cabin. It's not far from ours. It's lovely, you said with a slightly forced smile. It's not like you didn't like it, it's more that it was yours, to yourself, alone. Yao Yorozu, you're a very sweet girl, and I very much appreciate that you have allowed us to use your family's personal bathhouse, but would it have killed you to only have had one cabin for teachers? Like, you know, I think your teacher is kind of hot, and I was hoping that we could get a little closer this weekend, but no. Let me show you inside, she said excitedly skipping up that one step onto the front of the veranda and then opening the door for you. I had our staff come out to clean the cabins so that they would be all set for your arrival. You looked around at the immaculate little place and sighed, pushing away the disappointment at not sharing with Aizawa and smiling happily. This is really lovely, Yaoyorozu, thank you. I'm so glad you approve, Miss Lin, she gushed. I really admire you as a teacher and person and I wanted to thank you by making this a wonderful weekend for you. Again, one cabin would have been better, but thank you, you thought, smiling at her. Mr. Aizawa's cabin is over there, by the way, she added, gesturing out the window, and your interest peaked immediately in, at hearing his name. Oh, you asked, sidling up to the window and looking out. Oh, that's good, he's close. Um, I mean, in case something happens and I need to reach him quickly, you added, a little embarrassed at speaking so openly and possibly giving your eagerness away. Of course, Yayorozu replied, not picking up on the flusteredness in your tone. If you'll excuse me now, I'll go and set up in the girls' cabin. Please don't hesitate to call me if you need anything. Thank you very much, Yayorozu. You are very kind, you said, walking her to your door. She left and you closed the door, then walked back past the window and peeked out again to see if you could spot him. I could possibly leave the blind up while changing, you thought, immediately mentally slapping yourself at the risque thought that crossed your mind. Yin, you hussy. You plopped yourself down on the bed and took your shoes off. The bus driver had already brought your bags to the cabin ahead of you, so you reached out for it and pulled it up onto the bed, then opened it to set a few things out. After grabbing your toiletries bag, you walked to the ensuite and put it on the side of the sink. This place is gorgeous, you thought, looking around at everything. A knock at the door drew your attention, and you walked back out and pulled it open. Oh, you're here. Azawa said as he stood there on the porch, tired, bloodshot eyes peering at you. Yes, you replied stiffly, having not prepared to see him so soon. I'm going to call the students together in the hall and give them a verbal itinerary of the weekend. He stated, I don't particularly need you there, but... N no, 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 I'll be there. I'll just change into something a little more casual and then I'll be right over, he said. Okay. He replied as he stepped back and then turned to leave. Oh, he feels like he's gone cold again. You moaned sadly to yourself. I thought we were getting closer, but that was such a deadpan conversation. You turned back into the cabin and then changed into something a little more relaxing and grabbed a pair of sunglasses to use as a kind of headband, pushing them up onto your head. Mm, it'll do. Who knows, maybe Aizawa likes the daggy look. He certainly represented himself. You thought with a chuckle as you left your cabin. <gasps> Miss Lin, you look so chic! Yayorozu gushed as you entered the hall. Oh, you flatter me. This is just a really relaxed look, you said, looking down at your get-up. I think it's very stylish, but comfortable, she said again, completely in love with everything that you did. You were about to reply when Aizawa entered and immediately commanded the attention in the room, like he usually did. Schedule for the weekend, he stated, launching straight into it. Before sundown tonight, we'll go for a forest jog. Morose groans and wails accompanied his announcement, and he activated his quirk threateningly to shut the students up, which they all did instantly. Then, he continued, once he had their silent attention again, relaxing in the hot springs. An excited, soft cheer rose from the students. Sir, Ida asked, raising his hand, I checked the weather report yesterday, and this morning it states that there's going to be a storm later this evening. Run fast, Izara replied in a dead voice causing a sweat drop to appear on each student's brow. Tomorrow morning, we have breakfast at 6.30am, sharp. As Aizawa continued to talk, you zoned out, 
wondering if there would be a way that you and Aizawa could be alone at any point. I mean, I could ask if we could go over some of the training exercises. I'll just knock on his door a little later and stay in his cabin for a bit. Miss Lin? Yeah, Yorozu asked. Sorry, you said quickly, realising that she had been calling for your attention. Will you be attending us in the girls' bath tonight, or will you be using the teacher's one? I'm sorry, you asked with confusion. The teacher's one? Yes, we have three pools here. Two rather large ones and one smaller private one that's located around the side of the building, she said with a smile. Momo, why do you have so many pools? Jiro asked. One for each person, she added in a teasing tone. Oh, we were going to buy a place that had five pools so that we could use them in rotation, but the location wasn't secluded enough, Yagirozu replied honestly, again unaware of the rich that she was flaunting. Uh, sure, Jiro replied and then looked at you. Miss, are you okay? Me? You asked with a giant grin on your face. Yes, fine, why? You have a really big smile on your face, like, huge smile. She deadpanned. Do I? You asked, still grinning from ear to ear. So will you be joining us? Yagirozu asked expectantly. Oh, I'm afraid I might not be able to, you said, feigning regret. I will probably be using the teacher's one. And there ends chapter 28. Stay tuned for chapter 29 coming tomorrow.